Hey, I'm Mechanical Engineer, and in today's video, we're gonna be building a realistic looking house for my leopard gecko. Basically everything I'll be using in the video today, you can find at Hobby Lobby, which is where I bought it. I really like Hobby Lobby. But I'll also try to leave some links for them down below where you can find them online. But enough talk, on to the build. So to get started, the first thing you're going to need is a buttload of popsicle sticks. You can get a box of a thousand sticks for about six dollars at Hobbith Lobbith. We're also going to need some wood glue, I'm using Titebon 2, scissors, and a ruler. So with our build supplies accounted for, let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is build the foundation that our house will stand on. I'm going to do this by gluing several popsicle sticks together in a rectangular frame and then attaching slats across that. I've left a decent sized hole in the center of the foundation so the gecko can crawl up from the basement. That'll make more sense in a minute. But for now, let's start turning the popsicle sticks in the floorboards by making them a little bit more squared off. With all of our boards cut, I'm not going to start gluing them in place using my ruler as a straight edge. But I am going to leave a few gaps in the floorboards to make sure it still has that rundown feel and look to it making sure to leave an especially large gap over the hole we left in the frame so that once again the gecko has room to crawl through it. After that I'm just going to glue a thin border around it to give it some extra strength and then Sally's your uncle. No time for the walls. For the walls we're just going to build them like you would for an actual house. Except of course a lot smaller instead of 2x4's popsicle sticks if you get what I'm saying. The hardest part for me here was just to figure out the appropriate height for these walls. You don't want them too tall or too short, otherwise they'll look kind of funny. But once they're all made, we can start gluing them onto the foundation of the house, making sure to clamp them in place so they dry properly. It was also around this time that I started framing our windows. Yes, we could have done this while we were framing the walls, but I just found doing it this way a little bit easier because now I know exactly where all the windows are going to sit and how it's going to look all together. With that, it is now time to build the ceiling, which basically just means building another foundation that's identical to the first one. Really, the only thing I'm going to change is where I put the hole in the floor. On the foundation, I put the hole in the living room, and now that I'm working on the ceiling, I'm going to put it right over the hallway. Next, very similar to how we built walls for the house, we're going to want to build peaks for the upstairs roof, just like this. I'm then going to glue our peaks to the top of our ceiling piece we just made, then glue very thin dowel rods across the top of those to maximize strength. Perfect. That way it should stay nice and sturdy regardless of what kind of natural disaster hits it. Inside the terrarium. Now comes the fun part. We're going to take our foundation with its walls and our ceiling with its peaks and marry them together with a healthy amount of glue. I'm going to hold this down with both clamps and weights to guarantee we get the best seal possible. Would you look at that, our house is finally starting to take shape. Now before we move on, I'm going to take this thing outside and give it a quick coat of dark brown spray paint to help age the wood, because after this point we're really not going to be able to paint the core of the house. No time for the siding. Putting on the siding is very similar to putting on the floorboards, except we're going to want to overlap the boards slightly so it looks like actual siding. But as a result, that is going to affect how our sides interact with each other, so we're going to want to cut the ends of the boards at a slight angle so that the two sides meet up at a proper point. But of course, just like the floorboards, remember to leave a few open gaps or off-hanging boards here and there to help sell the dilapidated look. And with that, I'm going to grab this square piece of balsa wood and begin building the porch. This part is pretty straightforward. Honestly, the hardest thing is just making sure you have enough support so that everything doesn't fall over, but yet it still looks run down and abandoned. And now we have made it to the final step of the house construction process, and that is making the roof. To do this, I first cut two identical pieces of masonite that stick out just a tad over the house. 
I then took a marker and a straight edge and marked where I wanted my upstairs windows to be located, and drilled out the corners of that design, and then cut them out using a vise and a coping saw. After everything is cut out, it is time to glue the two pieces together. Now we want the roof to be removable, so we do not want to glue these pieces to the actual frame of the house, we just want to glue them to each other. I'm just using the frame of the house to help make sure they have the proper shape and angling. As you can see, electrical tape is super convenient to help hold everything together while the glue dries. Once it has had a chance to dry, I'm going to go ahead and remove the tape and glue a thin dowel rod to the top of the roof to give it added strength. And then two pieces of the same dowel rod on the bottom of the roof that'll sit in between the peaks of the house's frame. And that way, once you place the roof onto the actual house, it will lock it in place, therefore stopping it from sliding off. With that, we are now basically just going to repeat all of the previous steps to build the upstairs windows. With that, the construction of the actual house is now complete and all we have left to build is the house's foundation. And yes, I know that sounds a little bit backwards. I want my house to have a traditional brick foundation, so I'm going to start off by cutting small bricks out of a scrap piece of pine I have lying around. It is worth noting it would be a lot easier to just take a wood burner and burn a pattern of bricks into a block of pine wood. However, I don't think it would end up looking nearly as realistic as what I'm going for. So now once we have way too many blocks cut out, this is honestly like three times as many as I'm going to need, we can begin the assembly process. And all that really entails is just gluing the blocks together to the same dimensions as the bottom of your house so that they can fit together properly. You're of course going to want to make sure you have a few missing blocks to keep up the dilapidated look, and I have a relatively large hole at the front of the foundation so my gecko can crawl through it and gain access to the basement. But really, just let your imagination run wild. These blocks are not going to line up very straight or very even at all, but that is good. That is why we went with the individual blocks instead of just wood burning it into a piece of wood. I feel like this makes it look a whole lot more realistic and really adds to the effect. And once the brick foundation is finished, it's honestly just as simple as gluing it to the bottom of the house. You know, I like the look I do, but I just feel like it might be a tad too big. That's more like it. Now that all the construction is done, it is time for the most fun part of the video where we get to paint and style the house. After making a quick run to Hobbit Lobbit for some paints and paint brushes, we're good to go. So starting off with the bricks, I'm going to mix some red and black paint together to get kind of that muddy used brick color. Perfect. And now that we have a good strong base coat, I'm going to go ahead and lighten up that muddy brick color and paint a few off bricks here and there to help add to the realism. And after doing that a few times with a couple different shades, we should be left with something like this, which I think is starting to look really good. Now for the siding, I've decided to go with a dark dirty blue because I feel like that'll go with our theme really well, but of course feel free to do whatever you think will look best. Just make sure to consult with your gecko first. And once again, I'm hitting up a siding piece here and there with a slightly different shade of blue just like we did for the bricks. And lastly, we have come to the roof. For the roof, I'm of course just going with a dark, dirty gray with a few black scuff marks here and there to help make it look like an aged roof, just like you would find on an abandoned house. I like this a lot, I really do. However, I think it needs one final touch. So I'm going to drill a small hole into the foundation of the house and then insert a shrub-like tree I found at Hobbit Lobbit. 
After we go ahead and hot glue the tree down so it doesn't move anywhere, we can then begin to bend the tree branches up so that the tree looks more tree-like. And with that, we are now finally and completely finished. But now, what does the gecko think of it? Well, after I empty out and clean his tank from his previous setup, which, by the way, were Jungle Castle Ruins, link below for the video on that, and cut him out a piece of grass-looking reptile carpet, I bought this again at Hobbit Lobbit for next to nothing, we can place it all into his tank and get his opinion on it. I'm not gonna lie, I have no idea what he thinks of the house, and honestly, that's my fault. I swapped everything out, and so as you can see in the video, he spends his whole time just walking around looking at everything. But the longer I leave the house in there, the more he seems to enjoy it. However, his favorite hide seems to be the rock one I built for him about two years ago. And if you guys want to see that video, I'll leave a link for that as well below. And so there you guys have it. My realistic looking popsicle stick leopard gecko house <laughs> i don't know what do you guys think of it though i would love to hear from you down below but hey thank you so much for you guys watching i hope you did enjoy this video and if you did please feel free to hit the thumbs up and subscribe and we're going i'll see you next time thanks for watching and please feel free to subscribe